welcome back here 10 and today we're looking specifically at center of mass and how that impacts on whether an object is stable or balanced about its space or not so three learning outcomes first of all define what is meant by the center of mass of an object Secondly, describe the centre of the mass of an object that's suspended from a fixed point. And thirdly, explain how to find the centre of mass of a symmetrical object. Tricky word, that one, symmetrical. So, just a quick quiz. One to eight in your margins for me. There's a couple of recap questions from biology and a bit of uh, chemistry at the end as well. So, just quickly write down your answers for me. Pause the slide now. So, here's your answers. Um, a vector is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. And it's true, a vector quantity can be represented by an arrow in a direction, and the length of the arrow is prop proportional to the magnitude of that vector. Number three, Newton's third law states that two objects interact with each other, they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. Okay, underline the equal and underline the opposite. So I do really want to see those words there. So now we've got the book laying on the table and there are a couple of things. Firstly, the book is exerting an upward reaction force and the book is also exerting a downward weight force on the table. The, ta the equation that links weight to mass and gravitational field strength equals weight equals mass times gravitational field strength or mass is equal to weight divided by gravitational field strength or gravitational field strength is equal to weight divided by mass remember those doing higher need to rearrange that be able to rearrange that equation uh, the equation for photosynthesis is carbon plus water equals glucose plus oxygen and plants use though that glucose from photosynthesis to make cellulose to strengthen the cell walls to build up fats and oils and to make amino acids which then build up proteins including enzymes so talking about the solution here part a it increases and part b if you increase the concentration of reactant then there will be is more chemicals present there are more successful collisions do you really want to see the word successful there because it's all about those collisions being successfully uh, sorry the collisions between particles being successful okay brilliant let's move on for today's lesson so what do these things have in common and the key here is no, it is not what can you balance on parts of your body, but it is, wait for it, just balance and the centre of mass. Because determining whether something balances and topples over depends on where its centre of mass is and finding that centre of mass. So what do we actually mean by the centre of mass? Okay, so when you try and balance any object around on a point, okay if the object stays stationary okay then its center of mass is above its base if the object is not stationary it means it wobbles or it falls over um then its center of mass is not above necessarily its base so if you get a bit of an experiment for you to do here guys at home or in class depending whether this is a cover lesson you get a book and a ruler and you're going to try and balance it on literally just on one finger now i think you'll find that if you've got a ruler like the one shown in the picture that it should balance roughly around halfway because that's where about half of its mass is acting through the center but have a go all right especially if it's a wooden ruler it might not be quite true and if it's a book then it can be a bit more tricky please don't hurt yourselves so the centre of mass, 
A sense of matter is which, which an object is thought, the mass of an object is thought to be the most concentrated. And depending on where that is within the object depends on how stable or unstable it is. So first of all, if we look at A, we've got my Bunsen burner. Now the Bunsen burner has a large base, a large heavy base. And that large heavy base means that it is really stable and it should be really difficult for me to knock over the Bunsen burner. Those of you who have been in my lessons will know that that's not the case. I can knock most things over. Now, B is a vase, not like one that you would see in my, in my houses because I would have probably already smashed it. But the mass, the majority of the mass for B is not in its base, it's got a very small base and therefore its uh, mass is much higher, centre of mass is much higher, which makes it less stable. So I've sort of answered the question there really, but which one of these is the most stable? Well, hopefully if you've been listening to me and not drifting off to sleep, you will be able to tell me that it is A, because the weight is acting straight down from the centre of mass. It also has a large base and its centre of mass is significantly lower. You would find the centre of mass just below where the gas pipe hits the Bunsen burner. So here we have three gymnasts. Okay. And you can see they're all in three different positions. And the centre of mass, that's for my gymnast, is shown where with the green dot. Now, the weight will be acting straight down through the centre of mass. So my first gymnast is going to stay on my beam because her centre of mass is acting directly downwards. My second gymnast is going to fall, okay, and because her centre of mass is over the side of the beam and therefore weight will be acting down through that point pulling her to the ground. The third one, okay, is my gymnast um, and it is her weight is acting through the edge of the beam so she should stay on it, okay. So stability, right? If something won't topple over, it is considered to be stable. So if we think about some different vehicles here. Uh, first of all, I've got my nice large truck. And you'll notice that trucks are very low. And that is to in reduce and make their centre of mass lower. So that they are more stable. Because trucks actually, if they get caught with a wind or they're going very, very fast, it's quite easy for them to topple, okay? Same with my Formula One car. My Formula One car, you want to keep your centre of mass really, really, really low because the centre of mass means that it sticks to the road and is less likely to flip. Now, this is, don't try this at home, kids, but this is something you can do in some family saloon cars and this is one of the tests so see how stable a car is, is to see there is a way of doing this, not that I've ever tried it, uh, of getting your car to tip over onto its side, see how far you can go up before it flips over. Um, certain Audis had a real issue with this quite early on in their design and once they got to about 55 miles an hour, they would often, uh, their centre of mass was too high and they would often lift off the ground if the ground was unstable which resulted in lots of Audis crashing. Not good if you've got an Audi, okay? Now, depending on where my centre of mass is, depends on where how stable it is, and it has to be over my base. So the truck is in a stable position, okay? And it would take a significant force to move the truck over into a position where its centre of mass was not above its base. The racing cars I've already talked about is wider, therefore it's going to again be almost impossible to flip. And lastly, clever stunt driving. Nobody in the science department, but will stop the car, can get your car to tip over. However, if you're really good at driving, you can get it to drive in this position 
for a period of time. So let's talk about suspended equilibrium riveting stuff. So when an object comes to rest, okay, we talk about it then being in a position of equilibrium. So an example here is a hanging basket. And this is when uh, my hanging basket has been moved by the wind. Once it's stopped being moved by the force of the wind, it will then stay move back to a period a point of suspended equilibrium that suspended equilibrium is determined by the center of mass of my hanging basket now depending on how deep how shallow how wide contents of my hanging basket uh, will depend on where the center of mass lies within that basket so all of those factors impact the center of mass you might want to make a note on this so how do we locate the centre of mass? So it's quite simple. For a symmetrical object, so that's an object that has a plane of reflection, okay, we can literally just draw our lines of symmetry on. And the point at which they intersect, the point at which they cross over, is my centre of mass. Um, and that object will be at balance at that centre point. So here we've got a pentagon and a hexagon, and we can see that my centre of mass is in the centre of those. And that's quite easy for a symmetrical object. However, it gets a bit more complicated for non-symmetrical objects. So what I want you to think about is where are my lines of symmetry on these objects? Draw them out, work out your lines of symmetry. Just pause the slide now. So let's go through the answers. I'm hoping that this should be easy for the majority of you. However, sometimes it takes a bit of prompting. So if we look at my square, I've got my six, no, four lines of symmetry, okay? And my intersect is pretty much in the center. My rectangle, again, another two lines of symmetry, Triangle, three lines of symmetry. And look, loads of lines of symmetry here. So, we're drawing our lines of symmetry. And the center of mass is at those points which they cross over. You may be asked to do this in an exam. It's more likely that you would be given a regular symmetrical shape to do this on than an irregular shape. Okay, we'll go through how to measure it on an irregular shape because you may be asked to describe how to do it on an irregular shape. Now, as long as that center of mass is above the base, then my uh, shape is stable. If I was to rotate my triangle up into one of its points, it would be really difficult to ensure, unless it was really, really sharp, uh, that that triangle was balanced and stable because any movement left or right, any vibration would mean that it would fall, okay? Brilliant. So lines of equilibrium. This is fine, okay, when we've got lots of regular shapes, but as I've alluded to, the irregular shapes are, are a bit more tricky. And you cannot find lines of symmetry within these shapes and there's no point even trying to. So there is a simple experiment that we can do. And some of you that I think are in my class may have done this. However, what we do is we have uh, irregular shapes and we then punch holes around the irregular shape and we suspend it from my retort stand or for those of you who we might call it a clamp stand, and we have a plumb line. Yes, a plumb line was used by the Romans, okay, uh, because it would have a piece of lead on the end, and lead is very, very heavy, right? And therefore, when we suspend my plumb line, it is always totally perpendicular to the Earth's gravitational field. So it's really important to use a plumb line. 
what I want you to think about is you're now going to plan your risk activity. You're going to plan how to measure your irregular shape. All right. So take some time. Think about how you could do this using the equipment given. You might also want to think about a risk assessment. Um, it needs to be a really quick one because unless you throttle yourself with the plumb line, there's not a huge risk or if you're a complete numpty and drop it on your feet or you think that you're a cowboy and manage to swing the plumb line around your head and knock your partner out. However, these things happen, but best to be prepared. So, hopefully you've now written your method. So as I said, we can punch holes in my irregular shape and we hang it from a thread. We hang it from a thread and we suspend the cat card and attach the plumb line. We then with a pencil draw down the plumb line on to the card. Okay. We repeat these steps from different points around the perimeter of my shape. And again, just like with our symmetrical objects, when the lines intersect, they give me the center of mass. Now, ideally, you might want to do this more than two times. I would suggest to do it three or four times. Right. Now, there is a YouTube video for you to find and watch on how this is done. If you get really stuck, watch the video first and then write up your method. Okay, we're not trying to expect you to see how much you know because obviously we know it's difficult, you're doing it on your own. But hopefully we'll all be back together soon and somebody will be showing you this yet again riveting experiment. It'll be worth the wait. So, some questions for you. Can you have a go at answering these? Pause the slide for me. Lastly, key points from today. The centre of mass is the object you can read. You're all very intelligent. I'm not going to read these out to you. If you haven't done any work and you've just been daydreaming to the end of this PowerPoint, please can you now write down these three key points? Awesome. So, some exam questions for you. Pause the slide, have a go at these. Okay, for those of you who want to do a bit of self-reflection, which is always good in these times, can we have a go at this one thing you already knew, two things you still want to ask, and three things that are most important that you've already learned today.